All right. Submissions and slashers, horror movies uncut, always giving you exclusive interviews right from the industry. I got Mr. Michael Nader in the building, writer, producer, director of the film, The Toll. And uh, let, let's, just, let's just sit down, have a nice little conversation about this little folklorish boogeyman movie that you got going on here, sir. So first and foremost, I always got to ask anybody, the first time I talked to them within this past year or so, how you doing? How's the mind frame? Everybody good? You know, we're all still fighting through this pandemic. So first and foremost, how's everything going with you? Everything is good, as, as good as can be. That's, uh, I appreciate the question. That's very, uh, that's very kind of you to ask. Yeah, and I, and I hope uh, the same is true for you as well. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's healthy on my end. And uh, I mean, the mind frame is, you know, it's a challenge, but you, I think I've, I've grown more resilient in the course of all of this and having to kind of like, you know, cope with it and, and be, uh, you know, learn to, to sort of thrive on my own a bit. And, and uh, so, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting through it. Okay, awesome. That's good to hear. So, Michael, if someone was to come to you off the streets and be like, okay, what is the toll? What is the first thing that would come to mind? And then can you kind of piggyback off of that and kind of explain a little bit about the inception and how the film came to be? Totally, yeah. So the, the, the Toll is a, it's a thriller and it's a horror movie. It's both about uh, the fear of human evil and the fear of supernatural evil. Sure. And it's a, it's a horror movie that takes you to an emotional place. It's not a horror movie that's trying to, to beat you up. It's not gonna, not trying to traumatize you. Right. It's a horror movie that's gonna give you a, an emotional experience and it's gonna make you scream as well as cheer and right. hopefully, you know, laugh and, and go through, a, you know, go through something and come out of it with a, hopefully with a, a greater appreciation for life. Okay, and where um, did the, you know, film idea, did it come from like an actual folklore story? You know, sometimes you do find out down the line that some of these things are like kind of real things going on out there. So I'm sure you've been asked that a couple of times. So it's kind of, uh, I mean, the, the, the toll main character is stems from, and it's folklore, but it's really more history, just from kind of like as long as there have been roads, there's been the kind of the figure of the highway robber, the yes. highway man. Yes. And in particular, you know, I was sort of reading about in the Middle Ages, uh, they were sort of called highway men, and, and they were obviously the really intense, scary kind of highway yes. robbers, and they were also called gentlemen of the road. Oh. And I saw that phrase, and I was like, I, that is a horror character right there. Yes, for sure. Because it, it evokes this kind of like quiet, dignified, and polite, terrifying character and so that that was the the springboard for the character and and I also just love you know I'm, I'm fascinated by the social dynamics of rideshare um and in in this new world of kind of figuring out and obviously this is more from the before times sure. but but in our uh you know the trying to figure out how we're all supposed to behave in yeah. a Lyft or an Uber and it just the intrigue I just think it's interesting how we have uh sort of different dynamics depending on who the passenger is and who the driver is and I just was I wondered if I could write an entire script yeah. it's just about the relationship between a driver and a passenger to see right. that the tension ratchet up and to see the awkwardness and then For to sure. see them gradually come to sort of trust each other and i and i i gave that to myself as a challenge to see if i could write a whole movie based on that relationship awesome awesome yeah we're gonna get to spencer shortly here in a second yeah. <laughs> good, <laughs> as good, we good. talk about our lovely driver uh in yes. the movie uh, but one of the things that I'm curious about, because, you know, we are living in a pandemic right now, and I'm always very, very fascinated by, is there any little extra things you guys have had to do? Like, what are the challenges and how are you guys fighting through it in regards to, like, distribution, selling your film? You know, like, this movie was still out in a lot of festivals and stuff whenever this really first started to all take into place. So, like, what kind of thoughts and stuff are going through you and the team's head on, okay, what's the game plan on here on how we're going to make sure this film is still getting seen to as many people as we can during this climate? This is this very, you know, kind of question marks all over the place. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, the, the, the moment, the sort of pivotal moment of, uh, of this movie and our distribution strategy was going to be our premiere at South by Southwest. Right. So literally, I had, I had a countdown on my whiteboard. I was six days <laughs> away from flying to, yeah. to Austin. Yeah. And no, I mean, it was, and it was a fast, it was just, obviously it was a bizarre, almost like psychedelic experience for all of us mm -hmm. of just having our world kind of shattered. Mm -hmm. And for us, there was just the sort of added twist of that we, we were, 
<laughs> relying on this festival for, for our movie. And so it was canceled. And I have to say, whatever grief I felt about that, it, it was almost like that was so completely replaced by the, the just the, the, the new feeling of, you know, this was the end of normal life, right? So it was right, kind right. of, yeah. it, it just it kind of overrode all of the feelings about this movie and about South By. But what we immediately kind of said and the producers and I were really on the same page about this. We kind of just said, because this it was the end of our, our festival road, basically. Mm -hmm. South by was kind of it. And so we didn't have any sense, you know, a lot of my peers were like, oh, let's just wait. You know, I had I knew other people that were in South by, let's wait, they'll reschedule. And we said, like, we can't wait. We need to yeah. try and sell the movie like this week. Yeah. Um, and so because we had a lot of press built up for the festival, right. so we dropped all of it, kind of like right. folded it into the news story about South by South by getting canceled. And so that it was very fortuitous and and you know we were in an environment where companies were looking to get to get more stuff to kind of you know put in the vault basically mm -hmm. to have for the pandemic. For sure. So it all just kind of worked out uh, uh, really fortunately for us. Well, that's awesome. I'm I'm very very curious to if you were to speak to like a group of like inspiring inspiring young filmmakers who were you know trying to get their film sold, trying to do you know write their first scripts and stuff like that. This is something completely new to everybody with this pandemic. But I feel like you and you know and let me know if i'm right in this or not but i feel like your actual thing that you would tell these kids is exactly what you guys did like hey don't wait get your stuff out there you've put all this time all this effort you got all these channels that are open you know we know some doors are going to be closed but whatever's going to be open we're going to push our way through that is that what you would is that kind of how you would approach a young filmmaker if they came to you and asked how they would navigate through such a crisis i mean we all have crisis when we go through these totally. films but nothing like this before Absolutely, that would be my advice. Would be to take it to, to use this situation and and don't wait for it to be over. I mean, the you know the you're, you're still going to have people watching movies. Okay. And if anything, I do think we kind of need movies now more than ever. It's like and and even just physically, since you know everybody's been so stuck at home watching things, yeah. it's been a good time for people to to put out new stuff. I just think it's like you it, with even. Uh, beyond sort of COVID. It's like in any independent filmmaking situation, you're going to reach a point where you don't have control. Right. And, and it, you can feel like that's really terrifying that you're going to, it's like, it's going to kind of run away from you. Yeah. But you always have to make do with what you have. You always have to sort of triage whatever the situation that's given to you, you yeah. have to make the most of that. And, and you can't kind of wait for the moment when you have control again, because you're, you're never going to have control. You gotta, you gotta make the most of, of whatever situation you find yourself in. Yeah, very well said. Very well said. Okay. A couple more to wrap this up, man. And this has been great, Mike. Yeah. So I really, really appreciate it. Totally, so real yeah. quick. I uh, want to talk about Jordan. want to talk about Max Two, The two were great. Anytime you have a film, I've always told filmmakers, film goers, anytime you have a film that has a short, cast they are going to make or break the movie regardless on if you want them to or not but talk to me a little bit about max and jordan they had great chemistry on the set together tell me about a little bit about how it all came to be and some of the things you might have learned from them as well while you guys were going through the the filming of the toll Totally, yeah. Well, first of all, the, you mentioned their chemistry, and they are such close friends. Okay. And, and that, that really was instrumental. I mean, they're best friends, and they are, are you know, they make movies together in addition right. to acting and stuff together. Right. And so that was really crucial to there. And I think you can see it, because even when, even when uh, Cammie and Spencer are sort of despising each other, there's such a comfort in the two of them. Right, right. They are, they are so comfortable in going to scary places with Right, each you're other. like, you're not really that mad at him. We know, like, you would not be in that car you were really that mad <laughs> yes and it's and, and it's like they both had such they, they they created that environment for each other and i hope yeah. i was able to sort of foster that environment as well of just complete comfort and freedom to go where they wanted to go yeah. uh and and obviously also so i mean in terms of how it came about um it was my so my mentor is a guy named will frank who's a writer and producer mm -hmm. and he read the script and was like let's try and get this made and he had relationships with max and jordan already okay. and he kind of was like oh how perfect like they are because they were cultural cultivating relationships with investors and trying to kind of get, find their next project to produce essentially. Right. Um, and so we sent them the script and it also just so happened that they fit the description so perfectly of Cami and Spencer and right. that their personalities were so perfect and that they were so close. It kind of just, it really fell into place very easily and, and fortuitously. And then, yeah, I mean, that was that relationship and that dynamic throughout was so great because the three of us, you know, they're also producers. So they're so stable 
caked and the movie getting finished and being great. So right. they're able to, you know, they, their roles are really hard and they demand a lot of them from them physically. For and sure. so they were able to just be there because they want, you know, they really cared so passionately about this movie. That's uh, awesome. And so, yeah, that it, it worked out perfectly. Great, great. Well, Michael, last but not least, look, people are going to get scares in this film. Uh, they're, they're definitely going to feel the tension. They're going to feel everything that I think you guys are trying to do. But outside of the, that scare shock factor of the toll, what's one thing you would actually like people to take out of the movie outside of the horror stuff? Because there is actually a lot of layers in this little small road of a film. So I'm sure there's something in mind that you could say. What do you think? Totally, yeah. I mean, I the movie to me is about anxiety and it's about, again, I mean, it's just so, as it happens, I think it's, it's really perfect for this time because it's about encountering something completely uh, incomprehensible and bizarre and terrifying and, and facing it and confronting it. And obviously Cammie's backstory is such that she also has, uh, you know, she has anxiety and she has this trauma in her past mm -hmm. yes. and she is able to use that. And it's, you know, obviously she's, is facing that and the, the consequences of that on her life, making it really just challenging to navigate life. But by the end, she's also realized that it is a gift to her, For that sure. her fear and her anxiety are a gift, yep. that, her, that the toll of her trauma gives her something and gives her a power that she can overcome obstacles and she can survive these situations because she's been through it. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, I feel like it's a film that's great for these times. You know what I mean? Exactly good. For good. Me. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way. Thank sure, you so sure. much. Well, Michael, hey, man, thank you so much. I know you got a lot more of these to do. Get the word out about the film. I can't wait for people to see it. I even posted yeah. one photo on my Facebook page, and I swear like three people unfriended me like right after that happened. So that's a good <laughs> sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed watching The Toll. Can't wait for more people to see it, and I'm looking forward to the next thing you guys got coming out the midst so good luck with everything and thank you so much for your time awesome thank you all right appreciate it all right have a good one